My name is Jana, and you're watching Finnish Knitting Stories. Episode 30-something. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to check which episode. Episode 35? 35. Let's, let's say 35. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I'm coming to you from Finland, from the southern part, right next to the sea. Um, today is Friday, May 27th, May 27th, and it's already evening. I came from work, everybody's home, and I'm very happy you're joining me here. A warm welcome to all my new viewers. And <laughs> hi to my returning viewers. I'm I'm very happy you're here. I think I said that already, but <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not to say it again? Because I'm happy that you're here. Okay, um, this is my little video podcast, mostly about knitting. But today we will talk also about crochet, just a little bit, and a bit about yarn dyeing because that's what I've been doing yesterday and today as well. Uh, yeah, uh, get comfortable, grab a cup of something or maybe your project. I'll be, I'll be knitting on my Skagen and let's, let's talk about all, all sorts of things. I don't have any finished objects this week because I recorded last week and yesterday, uh, I recorded an extra video. Oh, and of course, I forgot to mention that you can find me on Instagram as Kettunits and on Ravelry as Kettunits. All the important information is in the description box of this video. You can find all the links there to my Instagram, to my Ravelry, to the Ravelry group, to my coffee account. And I, I'm still putting the links of Ukrainian designers because we're trying to support Ukrainian designers and... I'm putting links to them as well to to the search page that that will give you Ukrainian designers on on Ravelry. Uh, so yeah, as I already said, I do not have any finished objects, um, but I have a couple of whips and I have almost a finished object. But then something happened; I ran out of yarn. But I will show it to you in a second. Okay, let's put that away. Uh, it's it's almost finished object. I ran into a problem. I ran out of yarn. Uh, a couple of episodes ago, I showed this granny stripe blanket that I've been crocheting. <laughs> My knit crochet blanket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I called it last time. Anyway, yeah, this crochet blanket that I'm making with all sorts of yarn leftovers. And I'm making it to cover the bench on our porch. And the problem is it's just a bit too short. This is the white. Yeah, and then I I got this much with the yarn. Mm, does it fit in the screen? With the yarn that I had. And I would honestly like 20 centimeters more. Then it would make more sense, really. It would be so much better. I thought to make some kind of border to it, but then it still would not, it not would not give me enough length. So now I'm going through my stash and trying to find, trying to find some kind of yarn to continue this for a little bit. This is a mixture of natural wool, thicker yarns. Uh, here is some Latvian, Lithuanian and Estonian yarn. Um, all are around same thickness and yeah. <laughs> just random leftovers that I had in my stash for many, many, many years. Here is some Dundaga, here is some Adelong, and unfortunately I don't remember the Lithuanian maker of the yarn, but one, at least one cake here was Lithuanian yarn. Yeah, <laughs> so this kind of, this kind of earthy, earthy tones and just a simple granny stripe. So now I need to figure out how to make it a bit longer. I have some finished wool as well, which is around same thickness, but it's it's just in gray. And then I have some Estonian wool, but somewhere there. I think I have odd long, but I have one cake like this left. Oh, the rainbow cake, but it's this thinner. It's a thinner yarn. 
so it's not really gonna work I would need to hold it double but then it doesn't really go with with what I have here so I I'll pass on that now I made a mess in my shelf but oh well so I don't know I'm trying to figure it out <laughs> I have this much left of of this ball I think this is a three ply yes this is a three ply or two ply anyways two ply three ply I don't know but the thicker yarn so yeah I need to figure out how to make it bigger I hope it works out but it's almost a finished object I could finish it I could call call a quits on it and finish it now but I, I would really like it a bit longer so that's my only almost finished object then I'm still working on my Skagen from the newest line magazine it's here I'm just very slowly working. I don't know. It looks like it hasn't grown, but I think at least a couple of centimeters were added since last week. Yeah, because I I got a new new yarn ball. <laughs> last week I had a leftover and here is a new yarn ball. And the yarn I'm using is Erica Knight Wool Local, which is like a light fingering weight and it's in a beautiful natural warm gray. It looks almost beige. It is like a mix of a mix of gray and beige. It's a nice color. I like it. I like it. This will be my summer cardigan, but slowly working on it. Slowly working on it. So what else? What else? Um, yeah. <laughs> Where to put it? Where to put it? Let's put it somewhere. Then I've been working uh, on a pair of socks. I showed them last time they are from an older line magazine line number eight and the name of the pattern was heather and i almost have one sock ready so it has this beautiful lacy pattern and i'm using kremke lazy linen which is a um a linen and a wool blend, uh, 80 20, 80 wool 20 linen, and uh, they actually advertise it as a nylon free sock yarn. So let's see how that goes. And this sock was knit toe up, and here is <laughs> yeah, here is this kind of heel. It was actually very easy to knit. I was a bit worried that it might be might be a tad wide for me because there were 72 stitches in the pattern and I usually do 64 or 68 but it's actually okay I think I'm trying to knit it a bit tighter and look at this beautiful lace so I almost have a sock it's not gonna be a tall sock just a bit more of lace and then I'll do ribbing and then <laughs> one more of these so here is one sock and I'm knitting it on Addi circulars, Addi lace circulars with the red cable. Kind of my favorite needles, yeah. I, I just like the needle and the fact that they are made in Europe, in Germany. So yeah, and the yarn looks like this. It's this beautiful nude color. And you can see the little linen fuzz sticking out. I love linen. Uh, it's not my f knitting with hundred percent linen is not my favorite thing. I have done it a couple of times, but I just need that a bit of stretch into my yarn. Otherwise, my hands start to hurt. But this is very enjoyable and it's soft. And I still have this idea of knitting half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho from this very same yarn. I just need to pick the colors, but I will definitely knit it. Now I'm, <laughs> the more I'm knitting with it, the more I'm sure about it that I want to wrap in, in this yarn. It's, it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Okay. That was my Heather sock by, mm, the designer is Ash Olberg. Yeah. By Ash Olberg. Let's put that away. And... My next whip is my big colorful beast, which is Metsa Cookie by Sirka Könönen. 
Uh, I have not got much further, but but I'm working on it slowly and steadily because now I'm in the part where I'm knitting color work flat. It will look same <laughs> to you as last week because there is nothing new. It's just the back panel. I'm knitting the back panel flat. I have knit these big flowers and soon I'll do these mushrooms. I'll call, I call them mushrooms. So there is my front. Yeah. That was ready last week, and this week I have knit this this much, which is not much, but considering it's a flat color work, <laughs> I think that's that's quite an achievement. I was actually thinking that I'm gonna put it on a break, but then I decided not to not not to do that. I want to finish it now. So I've been working on it slowly and steadily. And then when, when I get enough of this flat color work, I take I take some garter or a sock when I don't have mental capacity in a late evening to, to do this, to focus on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't watch TV and knit this, except on the single color rows. But yeah, this is nice. I will show it again if you're a new viewer. You probably have not seen this, but... I have talked about it in my previous episode, so I'll show you the, the whole thing. This is a vintage pattern from end of 80s, beginning of 90s by wonderful Finnish textile artist Sirka Könönen. Unfortunately, she passed away a few years ago, but her art is still very much alive and so many of you have commented that you have a piece either knit by yourself or by your mom <laughs> yeah like there were a couple of comments that that said that yeah you have a sweater by Sirka Gunnen and I think that's wonderful that they are timeless pieces that they can you can still wear them 30 years later yes they are a bit <laughs> they are a bit wild and colorful but why not? Why not? This is my happy, happy, happy garden sweater. And it's going to be quite long, as you can see. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be long and cozy. And I still haven't decided what am I going to do with Nick. I, I decided I don't want to do the button thing. I think I'm just going to make a big oversized turtleneck, probably. And then... Then I need to go on a sleeve island. <laughs> I hope I can get to the sleeves maybe this weekend, maybe. Okay, let's not be overly ambitious. I I just want to finish the back panel this weekend. Okay, if I get further, that's great. If not, then not. So, here we are. Here, here is my magnificent, happy, colorful beast. So, yes, those are... All my current whips, actually. Uh, should we? Let's have our our usual chat. I'll get comfortable. You get comfortable. <laughs> um, park my yarn somewhere. I'll be knitting my mindless garter and chatting with you. And now my stitches escaped. Oh my! I lost some stitches. No, hopefully not a big deal. Um, what else? Yeah. What's new around here? What has happened in a week? This week has been a bit different. I don't know. It's just I have felt that I'm all the time running and all the days got messed up because yesterday was a free day in Finland. It was a holiday. Everybody was home, uh, which was Thursday. And uh, I had great plans that I will do gardening or something fun in the yard, but it was raining whole day. So all we did was we collected some plants with the kids in the morning and then I decided that we will solar dye some, some yarn. So, but actually kids only collected the plants and then I, I loaded the jar. And uh, while doing that, I made uh, an, a special video for you, which I uploaded last night. So there you can see the process of solar dyeing. Just the beginning. The result is not there yet. It will be, it will, the yarn will be ready in a few weeks. 
fast. We will see how it goes. And today I actually loaded another jar. I did the one with uh, onion skins, two different, like the red onion and the basic onion. I don't know, basic onion? <laughs> Yellow onion? How do you call it? Basically, regular red onion and red onion. Um, do you call it red or purple? In Finland, we call it red. Now I'm thinking violet, purple, red. What is it in English? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then um, I added... What else did I add to it? I added some tea. I added some hibiscus tea, which is now looking surprisingly violet. <laughs> I don't know, will that color stick to my yarn? I very much hope so, because it's been soaking for an hour now. I did it straight away when I came home, and... Oh, it's looking very nice. I will insert little video bits for you of my second jar of solar dyeing. So if you would like to join me and try solar dyeing, don't be afraid because it's it's great, it's exciting, and you get addicted to, to that. You want to try all the plants you can find. Of course you will. <laughs> it's a trial and error method. Don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, it might be that some of the plants you choose are not going to give you great color or no color at all. It has happened to me as well, but oh well. Uh, the good thing about the yarn, you can always over dye it, even with the natural dyes. Like onion skins never will fail you. You can just leave, put them in, with, in the jar with onion skins and get a nice green or yellow or orange. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not happy with with the other colors. So I'm talking about the process in that little extra video. Go check it out where I'm explaining how to do it. I, I try to do my best. I'm not an expert in this. It's just for fun. So yeah, but I like solar dyeing because it's easy. Everybody can do it. You don't need any extra stuff. You don't need equipment. You don't need special pots and pans and whatever else yeah it's easy and it's not as messy as if you start the full-blown dyeing with plants um yeah i still want to do a lupine dyeing this year before midsummer because that's the time when you can get beautiful blue with the lupine flowers you know those big purple violet violet yeah violet flowers tall ones they grow they grow everywhere here. They are like weeds. Uh, yeah, we have them all around. And then I collect a bucket of flowers and I will try to get some nice blue yarn out of it. Yeah, I don't know what else about solar dyeing. It's fun. It's easy. Come join me. <laughs> I think I'll create, um, I'll create a thread in the Ravelry group. Just in case you want to chat about solar dyeing and share your experiments. Yes, let's do that. I hope I remember. I need to I need to make a note for myself <laughs> to do that. I don't know. My memory has been failing me. I've been just running so much again this week. A lot of kid things. And then I volunteered just one day this week because I just could not fit it in. I thought to volunteer yesterday, but I was so tired and... I've been having headaches for two days because my blood pressure dropped and <laughs> oh, old people problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry for <laughs> whining about my health. No, I'm okay. I just had awful headache for two days and like could barely function at all. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a bit hard to get through my days. But today is good. Today was a bit... There's a little bird on the porch. Uh, yeah, um, today was a good day, rainy in the morning, and now it's just cloudy afternoon. It's actually already evening, soon six o'clock. Um, and I'm sitting here, happy to kids, kids, one kid. Uh, our daughter is at grandma's today, and she, she will come back tomorrow because... Uh, none of us could take her to speech therapy, so grandma helped, and yeah, now she's at the grandma's. She decided to stay there and go to sauna. Um, so, she's coming back tomorrow. 
and mm, hubby and our son they are in the basement doing some boy stuff i i actually don't know what they are doing there maybe playing or watching something i don't know but again we will have movie night today i don't know what movie they will pick i hope something fun that <laughs> i can watch it as well um what else then i i've been cleaning the yard working in the garden um we have a hedgehog we have a hedgehog in the yard he lives there under our big bush we have a like a fence it's a bush fence live fence hedge hedge is the word yeah <laughs> last last week i forgot the word brim of a hat <laughs> i don't know it just slipped my mind i don't know i keep forgetting words sorry sorry yeah fridays I always record on Friday and it's usually after a long week. <laughs> not the sharpest, not the sharpest crayon here. Um, yeah. Pencil, pencil in a box, crayon in a box. What's the saying? Blee blah bloop. Okay, <laughs> enough with that. So we have hedgehogs, uh, just one right now. A couple of years ago, we had a few. Actually, yeah, our when, when we, we take the dog out in the evening, she always goes to say hi. And hedgehogs make the funniest little noise when they are letting know that they are there. Their protective noise. They go like... Very funny. I did not know they do that until we, we got them a few years ago. Yeah, I've seen hedgehogs before, but I have never heard that sound. Yeah, and we keep feeding them, and there is a water bowl for hedgehogs. So we have new pets here. Hedgehogs are good. I hope they are here to stay, and maybe, yeah, they. It's just one. Just one mid-size. And I hope there will be more. Yeah. Uh, what else? A uh, hubby tried to take a video one evening, but it, it was so dark and grainy and he could not get too close, not to scare it. I don't know. I don't think it's in the best quality. I could try to insert it somewhere in the end, <laughs> but it's just, <laughs> it's a big moving dot. I don't think it's, you can see much there because they come out in, in the dark and yeah, so... Not the best video quality. Uh, let's talk about my, my knitting plans. I have a few. Yeah, the half and half triangles wrap is one. Uh, I definitely want to knit that. Not yet, but soon. Uh, and then I've been thinking about knitting some summer top. I have not decided which one. I would prefer something by Ukrainian designer, but I... I have not managed to find one because my requirements would be like fingering weight yarn top down and no lace just a very simple top i don't know need to go also through my books and magazines maybe i can find something because i have a lot of linen shirts that i love wearing and i thought that some nice knit top under a linen under a linen shirt would be really nice yeah because I like my linen. <laughs> I like my linen. Oh yeah, today I'm not wearing any knits. I'm just wearing this home home dress that I wear at home. Uh, so, what else? Then I have a couple of fixing projects in a queue. Uh, I have a couple of knits that I need to fix. There, There is a pair of socks. These are our son's socks, one of his favorite pairs. I did not knit these. He got these when he started first grade. Uh, we have volunteers knitting socks and then giving them to all the first graders in our town. And yeah, they can choose their own pair. And of course, he picked green ones, his favorite color. And he has worn them so much that... No, they, they have holes in them. Yeah, 
they have felted a bit. I've washed them, but they still look quite shabby. But he really asked me, can, can I fix them? <laughs> they have holes here. So I was thinking of unraveling or cutting the toes off. And they are also a bit small. And then just knitting new toes because heels are still good. Here is reinforced heel, which is great. But toes on both socks are gone here as well. That's whole. Uh, yeah. And then I found this green yarn. It's not this. It's not exactly the same, but it is very, very close in shade. Um, and yeah so i will do a little surgery or i'll probably cut the toes off and try to knit one more pattern repeat and then and then finish the toe that way i can fix the holes and make them just a bit longer that he can still he can still wear them he really loves these because they are green he got them from school and yeah they are important to him. So that's that's my weekend project I'll be fixing. Uh, this is Novitan Seitemän Veljesta. Um, yeah, the color, I'm not sure about. Some kind of green. <laughs> Some kind of green. This is number 302. Yeah, they don't write the name of the color. But, no, oh well, not important. So I will try to fix his socks. That's that's one of the fixing projects that I need to do. And the other one is my old yarn yard cardigan. I call it my firewood cardigan because I I carry firewood in this. I always put it on. It's very old. It's very very old and now for some reason it has two holes on it. I was afraid that it's moth but I did not find any signs of moth. I don't know what else could it be. It looks like yarn, just one yarn strand has broken here. Like, and then also in front. I was afraid that we have moth, but I don't know. Could not find any signs. Or maybe there were knots and when I washed it, it, it unraveled. I'm not really sure. Or could I have ripped a hole in it? Because if there would be moth problem, I would have noticed something. There should be some traces of it. But basically, I have two holes in my cardigan. And I found this yarn that I had a leftover from this cardigan. But it's it's in this color. I don't know. Can I? I could try to fix it carefully. I don't know. If it does not... It's it's in the right color there. Where is a hole? I really hope it wasn't moth. I don't know. It does not look eaten. It just looks like one strand has been broken. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Maybe during the washing something came untied. Yeah, this is a very, very old cardi that I need. Many, many years ago when I was not that good at the knitting you can see the sleeve is wonky <laughs> there are too many stitches in the sleeve and i don't know it's just <laughs> something something very weird looking um <laughs> but it doesn't bother me i love it and the sleeves came too long and basically or all sorts of problems all sorts of problems but oh well <laughs> you you live and learn. You knit and learn. Yeah, but I like the colors on this. It's it's my firewood cardigan. It's very heavy. This is in Latvian wool. This is in the thicker Dundaga wool. And it's very warm. It's wooly. It's, it's nice. And I need to fix those holes because... Because it's, it's, it's the season when I need it. I need this during cold cold evenings in the yard yeah so that's i think those are all my projects today and i told you about my plans i would like to knit a summer top and wrap and maybe do some yarn dyeing 
So, yeah. Solar dyeing is fun. Then I wanted to show you this book. This is my little treasure. This is a little treasure book. It's in Latvian. It's about natural dyeing. And I, I was so lucky I bought it from a thrift store when I was in Riga many years ago <laughs> uh, for 70 cents. It says here, 70 cents. So I was so happy. <laughs> it's like my, my best find ever. Um, this is a very nice book uh, by Ilga Madre. Uh, she's Latvian, obviously. And it's illustrated and it shows you different plants that you can use for dyeing. There is a description of a plant. It says which mordant you need to use. Uh, when do you need to pick the plant? If you need to uh, dry it before using or can you use, use it fresh? And then, yeah, here is a cool color reference. There are numbers. And then in the end, there are pictures, actual actual samples of of all the plants used in dyeing, like yarn samples. And it's really, really cool. I have learned so much from this book. It's a it's a real treasure. Yeah, I'm so happy I have it. <laughs> I have a few English books about yarn dyeing. I'm just not sure if I have them here or are they at work. I don't know. I could walk to my shelf and check if I have any of them here or is everything at work. Yeah, give me give me a second. I had a few books at home. Um, I have the modern natural dyer. Uh, by Christine Bejar. Pro sorry if I'm saying it wrong. This is a great book. Um, yeah, it gives you all sorts of examples also of the plants. This is in English, so it might be handy. I don't know. Can you, can you see anything? This is a really, really cool book. If you wanna... And it includes also some projects and... Uh, how to dye fabrics and not not just yarn. Um, yeah, I like that there are also plant descriptions and several projects. So if you if you you get interested into it, this is this is a good book. Uh, then I have a Finnish book. Yeah, bye. Like this. And this is also a very nice book. I love the illustrations. Yeah, it it gives you a lot of knowledge. Mushrooms. <laughs> you can dye with mushrooms. You can get the coolest colors with mushrooms. And also a very nice book. And then the third one is by our local lady. From the neighboring town, they made this little little leaflet about sharing their experience about yarn dyeing. Some 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 basics and it just this is just a little leaflet. I got it in a in a when did I buy it? I buy I bought it when I took a spinning course, the yarn spinning course, not the, not the bicycle. <laughs> a few years ago. And what's cool here? Sweaters by Sirka Kenenen. <laughs> uh, or at least they look like, I think. Or at least they were inspired. I'm not sure, but they, they look very much in the same style. Could be. That's a, At least here are the similar trees that I'm knitting now. I don't know, are they by Sirka Kenenen or are they inspired by Sirka Kenenen? But anyway, same style. Yeah, we have a lot of a lot of local um, plant dyers, people who are very much into it and then they usually arrange all kind of fun things outside. Yeah, and I have taken a course in natural yarn dyeing. It was also fun. It was whole day. We needed to collect uh, our own plants and then we were dyeing yarn whole day. 
and it was it was nice and fun that was a few years ago i think i have some pictures in my instagram oh what else i think there is nothing else really for today yeah <laughs> i tried to be quick uh but i showed you all the important things i wanted to share and we had our traditional chat and just it was nice spending time with you as as usually yeah i i, I have a need i think to talk to somebody <laughs> at least once a week yeah and you're you're my <laughs> you're my people <laughs> you're my virtual knitting friends crafty friends crochet is good as well <laughs> or spinning or whatever is your craft maybe it's embroidery i've been thinking about embroidery um <laughs> okay i was already saying bye but one more quick thing about embroidery uh ukrainians are great at embroidery it's one of their traditional crafts and i'm really amazed by it my grandma was a master at embroidery and I have tried it a couple of times, but I don't know. It never like took off into anything bigger. I made a few pieces. I can do it, and mm. uh, and what I've been thinking that there is this traditional Ukrainian outfit. Everybody wears it. It's for men. It's for women. It's like a shirt or a blouse, sometimes a dress, and it has this traditional embroidery depending on the region that you're coming from. Some has flowers, some has birds, all kind of botanical theme or some traditional elements. It's called Vishivanka. Uh, and I've been thinking, would it be cool to make something like that? I don't know, I probably don't have the skill to sew it. Like uh, if I embroider a piece of cloth and then I need to sew it into a blouse, I do not have a skill to do that. But I know there are kits available. Like you can basically get uh, ready cut pieces and then you just basically you embroider them and then you sew them together. I was thinking, how cool would that be? <laughs> yeah, that's just... That's just uh, future, future plans and dreams, and maybe it will never happen. Nobody knows, but it's something I've been, I've been thinking about. That, yeah, not that I need another hobby. I still have my spinning here. Yeah, I have some wool that needs spinning. It's been just sitting there. I have spun half of it, and then, then it was left there. And then I have my goat spinning project because I have a kilogram of goat that was supposed to be spun into a blanket, into a yarn, and then I was supposed to need a blanket for us, but uh, it's still waiting for better days. Maybe when I'm retired. <laughs> okay, now it's starting to rain again and it's getting very noisy. We have a metal roof and yeah, and it, it gets very noisy during the heavy rain so i'm gonna finish for today and thank you for being here with me if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe it's helping for more people to find my channel and by the way one of you noticed that mm, you have hit 8,000 subscribers what i i missed that i missed the big 8,000. i don't know what happened when did it happen uh, <laughs> anyways that's amazing i when i started this almost two years ago yeah, this channel will be turning two next month. So I think we need to figure something out to celebrate it in some way. I could not even imagine that so many people would be interested in watching me <laughs> talk about my talk about my crafts. But <laughs> I'm st still very I don't know, chuffed. <laughs> I'm I can't believe that so many of you are here spending your time with me okay uh yeah <laughs> enough for today it, it's so hard to say bye to you because I I don't want to go I don't want to go I like spending time with you um yes but now now I have to go I'll go and make that thread on Ravelry yeah for solar dyeing Yes, I have not been in the Ravelry group for several months. I'm sorry for that because I have not had the energy <laughs> with everything happening in the world. But 
I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now. Now I'm going to say bye. <laughs> and I hope I will see you next week. And I'm wishing you a nice and hopefully sunny weekend. Yeah. Not not rainy like like now. Okay. I will see you next time. Heippa.